Okay, everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. I have a really special review for you guys. Uh, and it's from the Swatch Group. The first big surprise drop of the year. And it was this all black everything Ocean of Storms uh, Bioceramic Scuba 50 Fathoms watch. Uh, and I have to say, very, very impressed. And it really won me over when I, you know, of course, back when the moon swatch was a thing, it was uh, kind of disappointing for me because it was before they established that they weren't going to be selling these online. The going consensus was that they eventually would be selling them online. And then because of the success, they decided to never sell them online. So, uh, and I actually did have a really cool inside line on these bad boys right here coming out eventually and uh, being really awesome. <laughs> um, not in this particular cut and colorway because this was actually a huge surprise for me and it was enough to kind of pique my interest and draw me in. Um, and. I have to say, yeah, it just really won me over. And I understand that the value is in that experience, is in that acquisition. It's waiting in the line, it, talking to other people, like-minded folks, watch collectors. Some flippers were there, clearly. Um, but you know what? It was just a whole lot of fun. It was a lot of smiles per gallon, as they say. Um, and I, I was, yeah, it was, it was, it was great. It was super satisfying. Like you just don't get that feeling typically for, you know, $400 retail is to have that huge amount of satisfaction from a purchase. Um, and the level of, yeah, just the excitement, the buildup, uh, there was just a certain level of, uh, fanfare and, you know, uh, just magistry to the whole experience, which I absolutely ate up and I enjoyed. So, I get it. I absolutely do get it. Um, but at the end of the day, these are not really, you know, I, I think these are not competitive time pieces um, for everyday wear, but they are amazing, you know, uh, again, marketing memorabilia. Um, and they're a lot of fun. They just happen to be able to tell time, of course, because the brands that are involved have a huge amount of horological significance. So uh, actually, before we cut out to check these watches or this watch out a little bit more, let's check out my wristwatch check for today. Uh, of course, within the theme of the Swatch Group, check that out. It's my Hamilton Khaki Field Murph 38 millimeter on this amazing Uncle Straps stainless steel bracelet guys i will be doing a full review of this strap here uh very shortly so definitely stay tuned for that uh, probably within the next day or two so really stay tuned um but with that said let's actually take a closer look at this awesome release all right guys so a little bit about the swatch group and Blanc Pawn while we're at it. The Swatch Group was founded in 1983 and Blanc Pawn was founded in 1735. Blanc Pawn is now a part of the Swatch Group within their premium luxury tier. And in terms of the type of watch, I'd consider this a wild card watch. Some key contracts and design language are looking for something to fall within this space. Of course, you're going to want that eccentric styling with a clear commitment to theme execution, normally trading off versatility for wrist presence and bold aesthetic. This is their bioceramic scuba 50 fathoms in the ocean of storms trim, which is meant to honor the original 50 fathoms, which is widely accepted as the first true dive watch. Um, and you can get these for $400 uh, directly from Swatch at a Swatch boutique. These are boutique exclusives, um, so they're only available for in-person purchase. So with that said, let's go ahead, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. All right, guys, Ooh. this one is a looker. It's definitely the more sedate variation. And I was kind of the same way about the moon swatches as I liked the gray one that looked the most like a moon swatch. And I like this uh, particular one that looks the most like a 50 fathoms. And uh, that's just because I'm probably more boring than I'd like to admit in terms of my tastes. Like this one just speaks to me. So in terms of the dimensions, I've had 
I've read, I have heard a lot of different things, so I'm going to let you know every one of these dimensions I personally measured with my own caliper. So the stuff that I posted in the beginning of the video and the dimensions I'm reading to you now, again, these are the dimensions that I got off of my own personal calipers. Now, in terms of the diameter, which a lot of these, you know, these are, um, you know, uh, marketed as being 42 millimeter wide watches, that's at the bezel. Uh, so the bezel, uh, the extremities, I got it at 42 millimeters, but at the case, it's only 40 and a half. So it helps with the wearability. 14 and a half millimeters thick and 47.7 millimeters lug to lug. Full bio ceramic construction to include this bezel here. And then uh, a little bit about bioceramic, just so we all know and we're all on the same page. Uh, according to the Swatch Group, it is a unique blend of two thirds ceramic used in high end watchmaking and one third biosourced material derived from castor oil. So, yeah plastic, right? Um, and then the crystal itself is listed as bio-sourced material with an anti-scratch coating. I didn't know about the anti-scratch coating. That's cool. I'm glad it's a little bit tougher. I'm not going to try to scratch it by any means, but I appreciate them, you know, going that extra mile there. Um, and then when we get to the, the bezel, it's beautiful action considering, right? The material that is Ah, that's great. That's very audible, but still quite smooth. Nice and tactile. I'm digging it. 120 click, unidirectional, um, of course, bioceramic bezel. And then the insert is also biosourced material with an anti-scratch coating. The crown is signed and it's a push-pull crown. Um, and it does its job. And as far as the movement is actually pretty cool, guys. Let's go ahead and pull this out. This still kind of makes me wonder, like, why did they go through all the trouble of hiding this cool little display back on here? Check that out. So this is a system. Let me just give it a quick wipe. System 51 movement. And it has a 90 hour power reserve and beats at three Hertz or 60, or I'm sorry, or 21,600 vibrations per hour in terms of its beat rate. You can see pretty cool. So the thing is clear, right? I, I just, nah, that's, that's pretty neat. It's clear. Um, so this is not hacking, unfortunately, but it does hand wind. Um, and it does have an anti-magnetic Nivacron hairspring. So that's great. And as you can see, a lot of what's in there is non-metallic. So they consider this fully anti-magnetic. Now getting into the details back on the dial side, actually, let's just take it off of here for now. So getting on to the details of this dial, it's probably what sold me on the watch itself. It has a really cool sunray dial. I dig that. Applied indices that are loomed. It has uh, the date nicely tucked away there at the four and a half color matched disc, which is great. It helps hide it. Uh, painted hands that are also loomed and they're using grade A Superluminova. As you guys can see from the dial and also within the name, it has 91 meters of water resistance or 50 fathoms. Or if you want to convert that again at 300 feet of water resistance. So am I going to take this diving? No, I'm not. Um, but it is rated uh, for 91 meters, which is impressive. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to take this diving, but it is hermetically sealed. So that should also help with it. And then as, it doesn't have a screwed on crown, but as long as you have your crown pushed in, you should be able to submerge this. I wouldn't do it. Um, uh, just, just, that's just me. Um, just because the feeling, uh, that this watch gives me when I feel it in my hand, it's light, it's plasticky. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't have a lot of confidence in this piece. Um, but you know, it also wasn't, uh, super expensive. It wasn't cheap, definitely, uh, overpriced for its spec, but, uh, you know, a lot of the value again, I think is derived in the experience of acquiring one and, and, you know, and, and all the fun that goes with that, right? You're essentially, uh, going on, uh, I wouldn't say a wild goose chase, but you know, uh, you're, you're having fun with it, right? You're getting in the line, you're calling around, you're figuring out things and, you know, looking into the drop, reading all the, you know, um, uh, all of the specs and the notes on it. I don't know there's something that's just a lot of fun with that. Now the lug width, interestingly enough, 
21.7 millimeters wide, uh, effectively 22 millimeters, but I measured it at 21.7. And they do have solid screw in bars that use hex keys that are 0.9 millimeters. So those are what you're gonna need if you wanna swap this out at least. And I will be swapping uh, this out because this strap, as nice as it is, um, I'm not crazy about the hardware. I like that it's signed and it obviously fits within the theme. It, it just doesn't give you a great feeling of security and it is relatively thick for a relatively thick watch. And it just bunches up in terms of the wear profile with the OEM strap. Uh, so I will be, you know, getting with Artem's straps and uh, getting a little showcase eventually here to really dress this piece up and, and make it feel even more, you know, truly 50 fathoms worthy in terms of its title uh, that it has inscribed there. But uh, yeah, this is nice. And then the strap that it comes with is a 21 and a half, right, of all the sizes, 21 and a half millimeters uh, NATO strap. And it's nice. It, it also uses the bioceramic uh, hardware and everything. Nicely signed, guys. Let's check that out. 50 fathoms, scuba, right? So it, it's very clean. Um, and then, oh, on this side, check that out, swatch. So yeah, I, I dig it, but let's actually get it on the wrist. Okay guys, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, this works relatively well. Uh, it is, of course, going to be sitting above the wrist thanks to that traditional and quite thick strap there uh, in terms of the dual pass layout, but Hey, lucky enough, it was long enough for me to tuck away the access pretty nicely. And that's an issue that I typically have, um, you know, with NATO style straps. So, you know, pretty cool. I'm actually really surprised that uh, the Swatch Group actually markets these as NATO straps and they use the spelling and everything. So I don't know if they paid that guy who bought like the, <laughs> the rights to the term NATO and G10 or what, or if they just have enough money to you know, not have to listen to that guy. That's just a little side note from uh, the peanut gallery. But check that out. It looks great, guys. I, I dig it. Of course, if I get my wrist a bit too close to the camera lens, you're going to have some perspective distortion. It's going to appear a little bit larger than it actually is. Um, and although my wrist is, uh, you know, slightly on the larger side, of average, it is also quite tall. So you can see that it's quite round. So it's not like I have some flat, really accommodating wrist that just, you know, everything looks good on it. Uh, but I will say this looks quite good. Uh, again, I'm not thrilled about the added thickness by uh, using this, uh, you know, style of strap, and I'll definitely be upgrading it to a two piece, uh, you know, sailcloth. Um, so, but this thing is very, very nice looking. Like, check that out. Like, I'm impressed. The dial, the indices, the handset, it all looks really good. Now, the movement, hey, um, it has 90 hours of power reserve. Um, so that's great. And uh, you can hand wind it, also great. And it's cool to look at. So that's wonderful too. Um, and honestly, for $400, for uh, you know, an in-house movement, uh, that's not too bad. And uh, you know, this design, of course, it's nice to have legally the Blanc Pawn name on there. This is a cool collaboration. Um, so yeah, you know, and honestly, the actual 50 Fathoms, many people consider overpriced. <laughs> so why not the junior version? Um, yeah, this just looks cool, guys. I like the depth on that dial. Check that out. It just doesn't. I mean, you know, I think it looks much nicer than it feels, uh, to be quite honest there. This isn't some super impressive piece. It's not really meant to be. It's a bit of fun. Um, and again, it's it's uh, the best watch you're going to find at the bottom of your cereal box, right? <laughs> like, that's that's what it is. Uh, it's it's a fun prize. Um, it's it's and, and, that, and again, that adds to the experience. Um, it's definitely not going to be competing you know, with the likes of other watches in this price point. Uh, you know, other $400 watches are gonna be made out of steel and have movements that are serviceable and will have case backs that can open and that aren't hermetically sealed. Um, so, you know, that's that's one thing to definitely consider there. Um, but yeah, I dig this. So with that said, let's actually get it off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, slow light transition, and closing thoughts. All right, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Hey, hey! Check it out. 
And the even the bezel is loomed. Uh, so yeah, that grade A loom, they weren't kidding. That is actually really good loom and it's well applied and appointed and I'm super impressed. Like that is the one place where I think the watch over delivers in terms of its uh, execution is the execution of the loom is actually surprisingly good. Even, you know, when you compare it to other watches that are offering you a lot more value within this price point. Uh, but one thing I always like to work in, of course, is a bit of a low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it is nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting. Maybe include a bit of harsh lighting, which typically could expose any types of production defects, but all you're gonna see here is the fact that, yeah, the finish is a satiny matte finish there on that bioceramic, and then everything else is quite shiny and lovely. Ooh. And this is gonna be quite legible, especially thanks to that high contrast of the black and white, and in some cases, shades of blue, thanks to the loom. So very nice from that perspective, guys. This is, again, it's one to look at, um, but having it, I don't want to say in the metal, but I guess in the bioceramic or plastic, um, you know, it's, you can't, you can't set your hopes too high for how this is going to feel, um, you know, on the wrist. It's just one of those things. It's very light. It doesn't feel super sturdy or robust. Uh, it does have great tactile engagement in terms of, uh, you know, the crown grip, the bezel grip, the bezel action is quite nice. And I would say the winding isn't too shabby on this System 51 movement. So, but this is, this is a cool watch, guys. Um, closing thoughts on my wrist, guys. Too tall and bulky on that OEM strap, um, but I'm looking forward to balancing things out with an Artem solution, so stay tuned for that. Um, in terms of model variants, it's also available in the original five variations, uh, one to represent each ocean on Earth. And of course, this is representing the, you know, one of the oceans on the moon. Uh, what was that? Is there a little dust on there? Let me just see what I can, just to, maybe, no, it's not helping. Kind of like wipe it. Nah, that's just, that's cool. At 4K, that's what happens. We get more detail in the picture. Now, um, in terms of comparable models, this is really more of a piece of marketing memorabilia than a daily wearable wristwatch. Uh, so I'm not really sure what you'd cross shop this against. Um, you know, most any other 50 Fathoms homage will offer better value, period. Um, but they also won't give you the Blanc Pond branding on a Blanc Pond design and I think that's cool and that's commendable and it's a 50 fathoms with 50 fathoms of water resistance I don't know that's just there's something about that and it seems a little bit more pure and and distilled in terms of that versus a lot of watered down copies that are out there so bottom line for me is this release piqued my interest and buying it was the buying experience I think that really won me over the energy in the lines it was just really great and then the feeling of acquiring one was actually super satisfying, um, especially considering the price point. You know, the cost to smile ratio on the Thrifty Fathoms uh, is downright miraculous if you purchase at retail and get to enjoy that full experience. Now, if you're going to buy one of these because you got FOMO, your fear of missing out, and you're just, you have to have one and you, you pay an extra 200 bucks on eBay or something like that, I can't guarantee that you'll have the same experience. You will end up opening a watch and finding a piece of plastic in there um, that is, you know, well appointed and, and quite handsome, but ultimately not super robust and not really what you think about when you think about mechanical timepieces, uh, especially with the horological significance of these designs and these, you know, uh, historied brand names. But uh, if you just, you know, take it for what it is, it's a good bit of fun. It is, you know, McDonald's toy. You're not going to be, you know, when we were kids and there was a, be a little transformer in the McDonald's toy, we knew that they weren't as good as real transformers, you know, like it's just, that's, that's it. Like this is not as good. This is not as good as a Seiko five in terms of its build quality, but 
um it is a blanc pawn you know or at least it legally has the name of one and uh, it looks like one and um that's cool you don't get the feel but you get the look um but then you also do get to engage in the excitement i think in terms of having an experience right it's it's an experience whether you go or going out to the movie theaters going out for dinner you always want things to be an experience these days it's not as casual as things once were with you know stronger economies now we really want Want to experience something and then and, and get that feeling and get that buzz and and you know let the endorphins fire off and i will say picking this piece up uh yeah a lot of endorphins fired off it was, it was a great feeling and a lot of fun so let me know what you all think down in the comments below if you like the video please do a like and if you're already please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys okay.